Good morning, family. Tony here once again. Today is Sunday, September the 10th. If you got earbuds in, you might want to take those out. It's one blow the show far. Hallelujah. Guys, do you realize that we could be a day or days away from hearing the trump of God in the rapture happening? It's very possible. Um, I want to talk about that. 9-11 tomorrow is extremely important to me. And then from the, here the rest of the month through the Feast of Trumpets, I believe is the ex highest rapture watch we've ever had. Um, but first, if you have not come to Lord Jesus Christ for salvation... And you don't know whether or not you're going to go to heaven when you die, or if you're going to rapture if it happens, or you're not sure. You know, if you think, um, I'll probably go, I'm a good person. Anything like that, guys, you need to come to Christ. We're all sinners. We're all under a curse of sin from the Garden of Eden. Everyone has sinned. The Bible says none is right, just none, not one, that all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. If, if you don't come to Christ before you die, you will stand in judgment and go to hell. It's um, it's really simple because none of us are worthy of God. None of us, no matter what we do, no matter how perfect we lived our, live our lives, we cannot measure up to the high standards of holy God. Is that's why God sent his son Jesus to die for us. Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4 simply states that Jesus died and was buried and raised again on the third day. Raised again is the important thing to understand that only a, a, someone who was a God could raise themselves up. He came down as, as a, in human flesh, wrapped in flesh. He stepped down from glory. He's 100% man, but also 100% God. He lived the perfect life we couldn't live in our place. And he died on the cross as a sacrifice for our sins. And anyone who puts their faith and trust in him will be saved, will have eternal life, will be given the Holy Spirit. They will be saved and sealed till the day of redemption. Put your faith and trust in Jesus today. Don't waste any time. We're not promised another minute on this earth. It's, it's so simple to get saved. A child can do it. I was seven when I got saved. It's, it's not a, it's, it's nothing, there's, there's nothing you have to do special to get saved. You don't have to go before a preacher. You don't have to change your lifestyle. You come to Christ as you are. Jesus has come to me as you are for as you were, uh, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. So come to him now. Don't wait. We're not promised another minute on this earth. So do it today. Okay. And um, so 9-11, um, it will be 9-11 in Israel sometime this afternoon. Right now, it's, um, hold on, I'll tell you, I think it's 10-50 uh, it's Eastern Standard Time right now. Sometime between 12 and 1 o'clock, which by the time this post might already be then, it'll already be 9-11 in Israel. Now, the reason why 9-11 is important to me, well, there's a lot of reasons, really. Um, we know that 9-11 is synonymous with the... Um, the ninth of Av, or what was called Tish, Tisha B'Av. In um, Gramatria, in Hebrew Gramatria, Tisha B'Av is 9-11. So there's a connection to 9-11 with Gramatria, with Hebrew Gramatria. But there's also, there's connections with me personally. And, and there's connections, I believe, a lot of other kinds of connections too. But, you know, it's obviously it's an emergency, you know, uh, 9-11 is like, you know, it means, it means it's like emergency, emergency 911. 911 is what we call when there's an emergency. So 9-11 is associated with emergencies, like a warning or a, you know, you know, you know, calling for help, a call for help. You know what I mean? So anyways, growing up, I noticed a lot of nines and 11s in my life. Now I've made many videos about it. The past couple of videos, I think I've even mentioned some of this, but 9-11 is, um, very significant in my life. Um, my dad, and um, he had like five brothers, and his youngest brother, his name was William. My dad was Jack. He was 11 years older than his youngest brother, William. And then my dad has a son named Jack. He's the oldest. He's, the, he's my oldest brother. He's passed away, but he was Jack, and I'm the youngest brother. Kenny was the middle brother, but my name is also William. William Anthony Early is where Tony comes from. So I'm another William, and Jack was 11 years older than me. 
Well, Kenny was nine years older than me, and I'm certain that one of my dad's brothers was nine years younger than him, but I don't remember which one it was. But with my with my brothers, it's just three of us. So you got Jack, 11 years older, and then Kenny, nine years older. And so that was pretty interesting in and of itself. But what's even more interesting is that Jack's son, his name was also Jack, Jack the Third. He was born on 9-11. <laughs> that was kind of odd. And I'm nine years older than him, and I'm 11 years older than his youngest son. 9-11s just keep popping up, and they just keep popping up again and again and again, and um, in different ways, 11 and 9. Um, my dad was 56 when he died, 5 and 6 is 11. So was my grandfather. He was 50, uh, 56 when he passed away, and 5 and 6 is 11. Jack, my brother, was 56 when he died, 56, 5 and 6 is 11. But Kenny was 57, so he, he broke the uh, cycle slightly. But um, of the Jacks and, and, my, and my dad's dad, they were all 56. Um, now, all that could just be coincidence. Now, I don't really believe in coincidences, but, you know, happenstance numbers come up. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not so much coincidence as it is. It's just random numbers. However, it's kind of odd that they keep, they, these same numbers keep happening. When I was seven years old, I got saved. You know, I, I really don't remember anything special about um, being nine years old, except maybe the first girl that I ever liked was when I was nine years old that I remember, you know what I mean? So that's not a big deal. So I don't really count maybe, but um, I, I just can't think of anything significant that happened when I was nine. But when I was 11 is when I had my rapture vision, the only really real bona fide vision I ever had. I may have had dream visions, but it's the only vision where I felt I came out of my body and went to a different place while I was awake and saw things that, you know, what people don't normally see. So, I mean, you know, and I've told a story about that, but it's just, um, that I was 11. Um, and when I was 11, I lived in a house in Charlotte, North Carolina called Choice Avenue, um, was the street, but the address was 1108 and 1108 in Strong's Concordance means gnosis in Greek, which is to gain knowledge or to gain a new doctrine. And that's when I learned of the rapture. Well, I didn't actually learn of the rapture yet. I had to dream about it, but I didn't know what the rapture was and didn't actually learn what the event really was and understand it until I was 19 years old. And me and my dad was talking. It came up in conversation. He was reading me verses out of Thessalonians and then they hit me. You know, all them years spent, you know, thinking that I had died in my vision and, you know, it was actually the rapture that I had seen um, at 11. And so then, you know, with all the miracles and things that's happened in between there, and I've got a series in my playlist. If you go to my channel and you look, click on playlist, you'll see it where it says, I saw a miracle. And that's just a series of videos about some of the miracles of my life. Just some, just a few. It's not all. But um, there's um, there's a, a lot of things that happen between 2020 and obviously since um, I had my vision at 11. But um, what I'm getting at, though, is that in 2020, I heard these supernatural shofars. I know I talk about this a lot, guys, but there's, you know, I get a lot of new subscribers come and go. And so I just, you know, I want everyone to, to understand why 9-11 is so important to me. I heard shofars. Now, what does a shofar symbolize? Well, if you go to Ezekiel 33, it talks about appointing a watchman from your shores to, to watch and sound the trumpet when they see the sword come into the land. And in Ezekiel 33, 3, it says, and the watchman will blow the shofar when he sees the sword coming. So, I mean, there's this connotation of, Warning and blowing the trumpet. So in 2020, on September the 9th, I'm sorry, not September the 9th, September the, uh, the 7th, it was the 7th of September um, in 2020, which was Labor Day, by the way. At 5.30 a.m., I was out on the porch. I was, um, you know, just, I swear I always go to pray and talk to the Lord. And, you know, I watch videos while I'm out there sometimes. And, you know, I'm just trying to get in the spirit and try to, you know, I'm searching, I'm looking, I'm watching. You know, and um, hoping to get a sign of something or or get a, a, a word from the Lord. And I do. I, I do. Now, they don't always come the way I would expect them to. But I know it when they come because there's something that just, it's, it's something only God could do. It's only God's odds that it happens. So I, that's how I know. Well, I'm out there and it's 530 a.m. It's still dark on Labor Day 2020. And I hear... At first, I thought I was hearing a cow because I know that somewhere down in one of these neighborhoods, there's cows. Every once in a blue moon, I hear, and you know, it's a cow. You could tell, but my mind's working really fast. So I'm sitting there and I'm not paying, really paying attention. All I hear is, and then I'm like, I start paying attention because it's really long. And it goes, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. 
through. And, and that's why I played the trophy, the shofar the way I do. Now, I didn't actually hear it. I didn't hear those really fast ones. I only heard those two. I heard a long one and then three short do 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 on the first time I heard them, which was September 7, 2020. That was the first time. And it was in a place where a person couldn't really go down there in the daytime blowing a shofar, let alone at night. So I know it was supernatural. And that's another story I've talked about that many times. I've been down there. I've taken videos and pictures. I showed how you couldn't even, it's just treacherous woods. I mean, the trees were all falling and like, you know, falling over each other to where you can't even walk in there. It's a big ravine down in rocks and, and there's a creek down there somewhere or something. It looks like I couldn't tell, but there's, it's just really rocky and dangerous. But for someone to be down in that area of the woods at, in, in, in the dark, playing a shofar don't make any sense, first of all. And um, if there was somebody who had a shofar and played it, I, I would eventually hear it again and again, you know, especially since they were playing it the Jewish custom and, and they knew what they were doing. So if they were doing videos or something, I mean, it wouldn't just happen one time, certainly. So I mean, just the odds are that it was supernatural. So let's just move forward. And then, so when November, when uh, October came around, October 7th, I think, oh, maybe I should, you know, wait and see if the Holy Spirit prompts me. Well, I didn't get prompted, but I did go out several times in October. And I went out on October 7th many times. I never heard another one. I thought, well, I guess that's it. But then November came around. And exactly on November the 7th, now it wasn't at 5.30 a.m. This time it was like 1.14 in the morning. I heard another one, another one. But this time I heard it. And I didn't bring my, uh, the phone. See, I should have brought the phone. I had it recording. But, you know, it's one of those things where God's prompted me to go. But I don't know when I'm going to hear it. By the time it happened and I could have gotten my recorder out and recorded it, you wouldn't have heard it all. And if you've heard it at all, because the phone don't really pick up sound from a long way. Now, it's just a distance away. I could hear it clearly, but not likely you'd be able to hear it on the phone. You know, it's got one of those condenser microphones. It just don't, it don't work really well for long distance sound. It kind of cuts it out. If anything, point being though, I heard the shofar. This time I heard just like that. Not quite that fast, a little bit slower, a little bit milder than that. It was more of a, like a, I can't really make the sound, but it sounded a lot like my shofar. It sounded like an animal horn, but here's the thing guys. It happened in September and it happened in November. September is the ninth month and November is the 11th month. That's 9-11. I mean, that's a warning. That's some kind of a, a call for help, a warning. You know, like I said before, obviously God doesn't need help. So it has to be a warning. It's a warning. And I believe that it was a warning for me. Might have been for me personally, because I mean, since I figure I must have been the only one that heard it because nobody else said anything about it. And the dogs didn't bark. And I was the only one outside, it seemed like. So if it was a warning to me, then it was a warning to warn the people to blow the shofar per se, you know, to, so to speak, to sound an alarm, to warn people that the end is coming, that the sword is coming to the land and that the, the rapture is going to happen soon. Because I believe the sword coming to the land is a tribulation and we go before the tribulation. So this was a warning blast. And they were... um in the September and November, what's really interesting, though, is you take in September and November, 9-11, and you look at the prefix of the of the word. And the prefix September actually means, for sept, means seven. And the prefix for November, which is nove, means nine. So it's seven and nine. Now, I don't know what that means exactly. But it's interesting because, you know, if you think you got the, the, the so September kind of the seventh month and then the ninth month. So if you look on the Hebrew calendar at the months of, um, you know, for Tishri, you know, you got Tishri is the seventh month. It's also the first month. Um, depends on what calendar you're looking at because there's a civil calendar and there's a religious calendar. So they're kind of interchangeable. God uh, originally Tishri one was the beginning of the year. Uh, which, you know, would be September, this year would be, what, September 16th or 15th or whatever. But um, in Exodus, I believe it was Exodus, um, God told Moses to 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 make the beginning of the year um, Nisan. So Nisan 1 became the beginning of the year. But but Nisan 1, and then so you got one, the first month and seventh month, so they're kind of interchangeable. But on the, what I'm getting at is the Hebrew calendar, the seventh month is Tishri, which falls uh, uh Mostly or part, at least part of always falls in September for the most part. So November, you know, could possibly be, you know, the, the end of the like kind of like a bracket to the end of the fall feast days or something. 
I'm not sure exactly, but I do know that the 9-11 is very profound. You know, um, it connects with nine of uh, the ninth of Av, even though it's not the ninth of Av, obviously. The reason why it connects to it, because the, the word, the, the, you know, for Tish, Tish be, Tisha be Av is the word for ninth, the ninth of Av. Tisha be Av is actually 9-11 in Hebrew gematria. So anyways, guys, I want to get this posted because um, we're running out of time. It's going to be 9-11 in Israel, like, soon. So... In, in an effort to get this out, you know, get people thinking about this. Uh, I'm not saying the rapture is going to happen, but I think it's a high watch. I think we should watch. You know, of course, my seventh, um, the seventh day passed, nothing happened. I even uh, went out one time in the night. I don't think I was prompted as much as I was just eager to go out, hoping that, you know, I woke up in the middle of the night, so I went outside, you know, but I didn't hear nothing. So obviously um, it didn't happen. The rapture didn't happen. And I, I didn't really suspect that it would. Because I'm looking more to 9-11 through, through the Feast of Trumpets. The reason why I'm not looking as hard at the Feast of Trumpets right now, because first of all, I want to see 9-11, whether, whether it passed or not. Because um, there's other stuff too, guys. There's actually there's actually a ton of other stuff that I, I just ain't got time to get to all the 9-11 connections. But suffice it to say that there's a lot of 9-11 connections to me and to a lot of the other watchmen, to a lot of the community of the people who comment. They talk about it all the time. It's 9-11 is a big, huge number and I believe it's uh, worthy of a watch, of a high watch. So I'm putting this out here now. Feast of Trumpets is obvious, always a high watch, you know what I mean? Because everything about the Feast of Trump Trumpets, Scream Rapture, always has. Now, I did have that confirmation on the porch when I asked God, was it going to be on one of the feast days or not? But I was, what I was asking was for a confirmation that it wasn't going to be, or that if it wasn't going to be, that I would get a confirmation. I had two supernatural confirmations, one right after another. First, lightning and thun uh, I'm sorry, lightning out in the distance, exactly where I was looking. So I said, Lord, I believe that was you. You know, I believe that was the confirmation. However, it is a time of year where there's a lot of, you know, storms and heat lightning and things of that nature. So I like, if it was, if that was truly you, Lord, please confirm it. And when I said in Jesus' name, the moment I said it, a curly Q shooting star, and I've never seen anything like this. It looked almost like a firework at first, but it wasn't. It wasn't a firework. It wasn't nobody shooting fireworks at that time. But it just went, it just, it was a curly Q. It occurred to me afterwards. And I mean, I got goosebumps. I mean, I about hit my knees. I'm like, well, it, it, honestly, it, it was in a way, it didn't scare me, but it, it startled me. I wasn't really expecting something like that. But, you know, because I always prayed that God would give me a, a sign or a confirmation in a way that only he can. And then, but then after it happened and all, and I thank God for the confirmation, I realized that that curly cue was at the end of every video. It's like a replay. It was like, it was almost like God was saying, okay, I'm repeating myself here. You know, I'm having to repeat myself. I've given you a sign. Here it is. Now you know, you know, and and that was a very strong confirmation to me that the rapture would not happen on one of the seven feast days. Now any other feast is is up for grabs. I didn't ask about those Tishbi uh, Tishbiav or Tubiav or any of those things. The only thing I was asking about was the seven main feast days. That's the only ones that I cared about because I was getting a lot of comments about no, it's going to happen on one of the feast days, one of the appointed times. The rapture is the appointed time. We know that. So I'm not saying that it's not going to happen, guys, because I mean, I could have totally misunderstood what the Lord was showing me. Maybe it wasn't the Lord showing me anything. It's just happenstance. And I don't believe in coincidences. So, you know, there's that. So anyways, the point being that I'm not saying for sure that it won't happen on the Feast of Trumpets. There's a lot of signs that are pointing to the Feast of Trumpets. But then again, we don't know if those signs are actually pointing to the rapture or not. And who knows that this billboard like that Hourly Watch has, it's amazing. I mean, I'm not going to deny this is absolutely, it's, it's, it's beyond amazing. It's a sign. But is it a sign that the rapture is going to happen on that day? Is it a sign for the left behind to show what happened to us, a story being told in the sky? Is it the second part of the Revelation 12 sign of 2017? This is the red dragon sign. Well, all those things are possibilities. So I'm not saying that it's going to happen on the Feast of Trumpets or not. I don't know. I will say it is definitely a high watch season that we're in. So keep your eyes open, guys. Today, this afternoon, this evening, tomorrow, you know, up till about midday, it's going to be 9-11 in Israel. And it'll continue to be 9-11 for us till midnight tomorrow, of course. To midnight, not tomorrow, but midnight Tuesday. So, anyways, that gives us some time, guys. You know, like I said, if you haven't come to Lord Jesus Christ, do it. Jesus could be coming back. The rapture could happen. It could happen any time. We don't know exactly when it's going to happen. We know that there's some things that's probably going to happen first. Um, I believe in Luke 21 that 
the stars falling from heaven, the war in heaven, is we're going to see some signs. But we have seen signs like that. See, so, I mean, it's not like um, we haven't seen things coming from this. I mean, we said that, that stuff that happened in Las Vegas, the, the shooting star that came down, people seeing these creatures. I mean, it could be already happening. Um, it may not be, it may not have to be an asteroid storm where they're hitting the earth, you know, like boom, 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 boom. It may not have to be that. We are seeing astonishing signs in the heavens and people are afraid. So I suspect that it would be more intense than what we've seen. But then again, who's to say? All I know is that we are definitely in a season that we should all be looking up and watching. You know, in Luke 21, it says, when these things begin to happen, look up for your redemption draw of night, guys. And I think the time is now. The time is now. We're seeing enough signs with this September, um, the end of this month, when they're signing that covenant on a Feast of Trumpets with seven years covenant and all with or with um, the uh, sustainable development goals. Guys, all these things are pointing to something huge, and I believe it's a reason to be watching. So, so this video is just for encouragement. I, I wanted to put it out before nine eleven. So, please, guys, if you, I'm, I'm begging you, if you haven't come to Jesus Christ, don't waste time. Because the longer you delay, the more or better chance there is that you're going to be left behind because. This could happen any moment. Paul says it happens in the twinkle of an eye. We we know that there's supposed to be a trumpet and all this, but how, we don't know how long it's going to take. How many people are going to be? I mean, if you if you're not already saved, I mean, how quick are you going to perceive? Oh, it's the trumpet, boom, and then you're gone. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Are you going to have time to get saved? It's not worth the gambling with your soul. So, um, don't play Russian roulette with your soul. Get saved right now. Do it right this moment. Come to Lord Jesus Christ and secure your your salvation. Put your faith and trust in him and in the finished work that he did on the cross because we cannot earn our way to heaven. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 says, we, Ye are saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We don't want to be one of those people standing in heaven saying, But Lord, Lord, did we not do all these good works? You know, and we don't, you know, do all these wonderful things. Jesus says, Depart from me, I know you not, ye workers of iniquity. We don't want to be one of those. So we have to accept Christ and put our faith and trust solely in him. Solo fide, which means faith alone. We are saved by faith alone. We are saved by grace through faith alone. Nothing else. Nothing else can save you but the name of Jesus. Jesus is the only one. He did the work for us. You know, once we're saved, the works will come. You, you, you'll begin to want to do good works. And I'm not saying anything wrong with good works. Of course not. I mean, that would be evil. We, we all should be doing good works, but not for salvation. Just understand in your heart, you cannot earn your way to heaven. So all the good works that you're doing ain't got nothing to do with your seed in heaven. That's Christ alone. There's nothing else. So as long as you know this and understand this, go do good works. You earn your rewards in heaven, but make sure that you understand what it is to get saved, that you have to put your total, complete faith in Christ, not of yourself at all. It's not got nothing to do with you. It's all about him and give him all the glory for that. And once you do that, you put your faith and trust in him. Then you're saved and sealed. Then you're given the Holy Spirit, okay? And then your good works will count towards rewards in heaven. But it's got nothing to do with you going to heaven. Um, it's nothing you do, whether it be good, bad, or bad, good or bad, nothing you do has anything to do with going to heaven. Only Christ, Christ alone. Put your faith and trust in him today. Don't waste time. Don't be foolish. Do it today. Love y'all so much. And I know most of you are already saved. I, I'm not speaking to the majority. It's just that one or that two, those two people. I, I, if you're here, you, you know, I'm talking to you. If you're listening to this video, I'm talking to you. You know, there's always that one person that comes on here reluctantly, says, what is this all about? And then they hear the message. That's who God's calling. He's beckoning you. He's beckoning you. I'm looking at you right now. You know, I'm talking to you. You are the one that needs salvation. Do it today. I love you. I'll see you on the next video. Hope we go in the clouds. Hope I see you there.